Man, I'm gonna talk on camera just for a few seconds here. Please, good luck, dude. <laughs> All right, it's our third night at Earthship Records, and I've got the next song ready for the team to tackle, but right off the bat, we get some disappointing news. Tonight's a little different. Uh, we have had some issues uh, with COVID um, that have made it to where our two other guitarists cannot be here tonight. So it's just me, hit me. But I have my board that I've built for this week, and uh, I've got the black hole symmetry. Um, doing a lot of the spacey heavy stuff. It's really the only like reverb that I have on the board. Ah, oh, and this Echo X from Ranger. Effects is gated. Delay is so flipping cool. Um, the free shit from, uh, from Pinebox. It's, it's an octave fuzz. It's um, down and up and analog. It's so cool. I got the native audio Kiyo overdrive. Just really tasteful sounding drive. As always, the Empress compressor. Powering it all with the Chox DC7. Uh, Cytec Phasia, super lush sounding phaser that I like a lot, a lot, a lot. Controlling it all with the Disaster Area, always forget the name of this, DPC ADZ Gen 3, and the Yuna Utility Buffer. With the largest group of pedals yet spread across the smallest group of musicians so far, I opted to just use the pedals that we could for the night and bring the rest into my home studio space to record the secondary guitar part. So tonight we just have Harrison, Taylor, uh, and other than that, I'm going to be doing all the guitar duty. I wanted to get more experimental with Taylor's pedals this time around, so we tossed on some more unconventional things like the Kaleidoscope Reverb and the Fly Agaric Phaser just to experiment. Reverb is one of those effects that is generally tricky for bass because it tends to just over-exaggerate the low end and muddy the frequencies. But the Kaleidoscope is closer to a spring sounding verb with plenty of brightness and it can be used subtly and tastefully just as well as it can get destructive. Phasers can have the opposite effect and can thin out low end, but the Fly Agaric has a comfortable fixed depth that is also super tasteful and we liked how it sounded for certain sections a lot. We're gonna need a bigger board! What is this one called? The Fly Agaric. Oh. <laughs> and then you have the compressor after that? Yes. I would, let's try it. They sent this in, uh, Stone Deaf, literally so that you could have a boost pedal in every session. You can choose to accentuate a frequency range that you want. So like right. your low mids, if you want to boost those, or your mega lows if you want, or your highs. And then where you turn this is going to be whether you're boosting a, a wide bandwidth or a narrow cue, like just a little like peak. That's the peak. Harrison, we again split off his right and left signal and put the Chase Bliss Dark World on one end, along with the Alexander Sugar Cube running into an analog tremolo, the Tray Tray from Giannis LV on the other just to see what kind of cool atmosphere we could create. Make sure I put that right skin. So. So. So you might not need to play anything until we get to the... Which is labeled as... It's in the chorus. Um, so that's would... part of the chorus. Mm -hmm. It's the end of the chorus. It'd be D major 7, D major 7, D major 7. Let's try that. Alright. One, two, three. <laughs> would have been the chorus right there. Then B e minor, two, one. So one, two, one, two, and then goes into the verse. Instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, like that. Okay. And that'd be the only difference. Just doesn't do that extra two bars at the end. You could think of it like that. Yep, okay. yep, sure. Ah. This song, I wanted to make something dark, heavy, and immediately impactful. Having so many dirt pedals sent into this series has committed me to writing more aggressive music in general, I'd say, and I'm embracing that. I personally have gone through a few years away from listening to heavier music in general after having a background for years playing in like punk bands, jazz rock, thrash punk, ghoul rock, art rock, you name it. 
So this honestly just feels like a return to me wanting to capture as much energy as I can in these songs. What's up, Taylor? It's not a C-sharp right there. Did I say C-sharp? No, I'm just Jack. I'm asking. I, I trust I trust you. It, Don't. Uh, not a C-sharp. No. Where? Stop me when. Stop me when. That little, <laughs> that little two beat C. Yeah, this? Right there. No, well, it's a, it's a conversion back to the start. It's just it, like, instead of going. So it's not C or C-sharp. Oh, it's a regular C minor. Thank you. All right. yeah, it is accurate <laughs> if that's what you're asking. All right. smaller team, I definitely noticed a change in dynamic from the last two sessions. We actually had time to really break down and analyze the song. For Harrison, I sent him a scratch recording of a synth idea I had before the session, and we tried to elaborate on it together and see if it fit the pedals we had wired up or if it was too busy of a melody. With big reverbs, that is an easy mistake to make. A little goes a long way when you're dealing with long ambient decay. I like what you did with it. If it was like a more like, what was in the song was just... Started, just... That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, you're doing a little bit more like... Oh, I was doing the thing that you said with the quarter notes. In the beginning. And like, so On spooky. the second, can you go... Da, 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 da. Yeah. Now I'll just hit the uh, and I'll go. I'll just, I'll dip you or down. And then and also do it. Okay. It's going to start feeling like a grand C major if we do start on that note. Mm -hmm. So maybe can we so just modify the melody the to start from okay. that note? Can you go just from the beginning? No. So. Well, we got to cut. Oh, um, oh, oh, you mean the, the C. A oh, C yeah. instead of a C I thought, sharp. I thought you meant, I was, I was can you play it with the C? Yeah, starting yeah. on the okay. C? That. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I meant to I meant to do that. That's but okay. See, I just I was thinking. <laughs> um <laughs> that's can, you, can you do that one more time. I hope you got that on camera. <laughs>
Hey guys, Cohen here. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for sticking around. Now it's time to see who's going home with some of these pedals. First up, the Demi Dash Spadola Germanium Fuzz is going home to the Farm Pedals Fly a Garrick Dual Phaser. It's going to make its way home to the Giannis LV Tray Tray Analog Tremolo is going to. The Solid Gold Effects EM3 Delay is going to make its way to the Fjord Fuzz Berserk is going to the Ranger Effects Mini Bar is going to find its way to and finally the grand prize winner for episode three is I am stoked for you my friend let's check out what you're getting the pine box free shit fuzz the ranger effects echo x the native audio kio scitech phasia the collision devices black hole symmetry a chox dc7 power supply this gorgeous hand wired revelation cable instrument cable Pedal Train Novo 24 with a gig bag, a $75 Little Box Effects gift card, a Circles Drum Sample $75 download code, and of course, a year subscription to Persona Sphere, where you can download their Studio One software as well as their huge library of plugins and effects. And I hope all of this helps you in your own quest to make music. Thank you everyone that participated in this episode's giveaway. It was really awesome, we had a lot of fun. And of course, a huge thank you to all of the builders and gear companies that are helping make this happen. None of this would be possible without you. I think that's going to do it for us today. Congratulations to all the winners, and I hope to see all of you and more on episode four. Give me